John Constantine, a Hellblazer podcast. Everybody and welcome back. Before we get into the episode, just want to let you know that this is the free version of the podcast, and all that means is that we are way behind where I'm at in Patreon. So if you are loving this podcast and you need more John Constantine in your life, definitely go check us out at patreoncom slash and comic books and sign up for the Hellblazer tier, where you'll get access to the entire Hellblazer library that I've recorded so far, and also you get access to the exclusive episodes of the Planes, Trains, and Comic Books main podcast. So if any of that sounds good to you, definitely go over to patreon.com slash planes, trains, and comic books, all one word, and sign up there. And with that out of the way, let's get into the issue. Today we are reading Hellblazer number 55. And just a little catch up from the last couple issues, John has been tasked by a royal fixer to remove a demon from Prince Charles in the royal family. And this demon isn't just any demon, it is the demon Calibraxis, which is actually the demon that possessed Jack the Ripper and caused all those murders in the late 1800s. So John has done pretty well so far. He has identified the demon, he's got his name, and that's pretty much all you need to banish a demon is knowing its actual name. So he is in the process of taking those last steps in order to remove this demon. And at the same time, the royal fixer, who's named Marston, has been planning on covering up this whole mess, and that includes murdering John and his psychic friend, who's been helping him out named Nigel. And that way there are no witnesses to this whole royal family debacle. And I believe at the very end of the last issue, we left with Calibraxis actually realizing that John and the other people were inside of the Caligula Club about to do this final spell. So instead of waiting for that, he went on the attack he showed up at the Caligula Club inside of the possessed Prince Charles. And on the last page of the last issue we read, we saw that John was being attacked by Prince Charles. John was tackled to the ground, and all we saw at the very end was a black panel and the sound of bones crunching. So first things first with issue 55, we got the cover here. We see a Union Jack flag, and coming out of the middle of it is the demon skull of Calibraxis himself. Another great cover by Glenn Fabry, and we see also that this is written by Garth Ennis with art by William Simpson. And we start off on the first page with no mystery at all about what happened between the last issue and this one. They made it look like John was in dire straits, and he is definitely injured, but we start off with him being treated for his injuries. John is yelling out in pain as David Hazlitt wraps him up with some bandages, and he's saying, Ah, oh, careful, you stupid bastard. Ah. And David is saying to him, don't struggle so much then and watch your mouth. And it seems that John doesn't actually know how he got out of that situation. He just knows that he woke up here. So we asked Marston who's in the room. So what happened? I thought I was a goner. And Marston answers him. Fortunately, Hazlitt had the uh, foresight to bring a revolver. I, I believe they call it kneecapping. He's over there. And if you remember in the last issue, we saw that Marston was actually making David Hazlitt prepare to kill John with that revolver once the ceremony was done, and instead he was able to use it to save John's life. So Marston points over to the corner where the possessed Prince Charles is hanging from a wall with swords in his hands, literally hanging him from the floor. You can see his kneecaps have been totally blown out, and he is screaming in pain. And we see the name of this issue is Royal Blood Part 4, Dog Eat Dog. So seeing this, John stands up and says, that's pretty secure, all right. Christ, this hurts. And David Hazlitt says, he took a little chunk out of you, but the bone's intact. And then Marston tells everybody, we'll go up to my office, quieter there. And then as they're walking to his office, he turns to David and says, oh, and could you deal with that matter we discussed a few moments ago, Hazlitt? And David obeys him and leaves. And then John turns to him suspiciously and says, what matter is that, Marston? And then Marston stops walking and turns to John and gets really close to his face and says, None of your business. Understand this, Constantine. Once you've returned that thing to hell, you will forget all of this. I am a very powerful man, and the royal family's position must be protected. 
So, if you even try to expose this affair, any newspaper editor who doesn't laugh you out of his office will find a D notice staring him in the face. Clear? And then Marston walks off in a huff, and John's friend Nigel's with them who heard all this, and he says, Dear Jesus. Then we get to another room where Holly and Hugh, the two twins who were at the seance a couple issues ago, are waiting, I'm assuming for Marston to give him some orders. And Hugh is saying to his sister, We'll be fine, Holly. I'm sure we will. I'm sure. And if you remember, these two have not been the same ever since the seance where they actually saw the face of Calabraxis and the true evil of that demon. In fact, Holly hasn't even spoken since that time. So as they're sitting in this room while Hugh is trying to assure both of them, but mostly himself, that everything's going to be fine, all of a sudden they hear four gunshots. And Hugh exclaims, Oh my God! Oh Christ! What's happening? And as he stands up to go to the door, he opens it and he sees that David Heslett is there. And he says, Heslett? Heslett, what the hell was that? I heard shots. And why are we here, damn it? And David speaks calmly to Hugh and says, Relax, Hugh. How is Holly? And Hugh answers, She, uh, she hasn't spoken since the seance. I think, I think she's forgotten how to. It was so horrible. Now please, Heslet, what's going on? And then to answer, David raises his revolver, and he kind of waves it about and says, Four other club members saw what happened this evening, Hugh. They won't be telling anybody. And as Hugh gawks at the gun, all of a sudden, David brings it up and points it directly at Hugh and says, I want you to keep quiet too, Hugh. And Hugh puts up his hands and begins to beg for his life, saying, No, for God's sake! But David just looks at him and pulls the trigger and shoots him directly in the head. And this is super graphic. You see the bullet exit the back of his skull, so definitely Hugh is dead. And as his body falls down, David turns to Holly and says, I am sorry about this, Holly. You know how it is. And she looks at him stone-faced for a second and then looks down and says, don't be sorry. And with that, David doesn't hesitate. He just shoots her in the head as well. And the narration over this one panel where he's shooting her, where we see that he's smiling, says, Hazlitt is loving this so much. He can't help himself. He comes when he pulls the trigger. And Constantine, he thinks, Constantine's next. Then we cut back to Marston's office, where Marston is waiting with John and Nigel, and they hear the shooting, and Nigel asks, w was that shooting? And then John turns to Marston knowingly and says, yeah, probably Heslick killing the witnesses, right, Marston? And Marston doesn't really answer him. He just kind of smiles and adjusts his vest and says, I assume you brought what you need, Constantine. Please prepare for the ritual now. And if you'll excuse me, I must speak to Heslett. And then he leaves his office, and the second he closes the door, Nigel turns to John and says, You you know what that means, don't you? He'll kill us too! And John turns to him and agrees and says, As soon as the demon's gone, we've had it. And Nigel kind of starts freaking out. He says, No! No, I don't want to die! And John's not really paying attention. He begins to stroke his chin, trying to ponder how to get out of this predicament, and he says, Shut up, Nigel. I'm thinking. Now, Marston has the same manuscript page as I do, and the binding spell. I think he summoned Calabraxis and bound it to the royal bastard. Shit, I know he did. I can't think why, but I know he did it. And Nigel's confused for a second, and he says, Marston? But he's trying to get the demon out. And John replies, yeah, whatever he wanted out of this, he hasn't got it. So he wants me to do the dirty work and clean up his mistake. And Nigel continues freaking out, saying, but that doesn't help us, does it? We're gonna die. Constantine, you're supposed to be good at this. Think of something. And John turns to him with his arrogant sneer and says, I already have. And then he pulls out the spells that he was talking about that he found from Marston's desk. And he says, let's see. Contacting, summoning, binding. Got it. And Nigel asks, what are you going to do? And as John replies, he pulls out a cigarette and begins to light it. And they walk out of Marston's room. And John says, what I always do, Nigel. Screw them before they screw me. So he walks down the hall and he finds the room that Prince Andrew was in. And this was from the last issue. If you remember, as they were walking down the hall when they first got to the Caligula Club, Prince Andrew came out of one of the rooms after hearing John's voice and he began to yell at him, but he was in full BDSM leather gear and like straps and a mask and everything. So he looked completely different than we'd seen him. So for some reason, John goes over to that room and he knocks on the door and Prince Andrew answers saying, 
What is it? I'm very busy. And out of nowhere, John has already picked up a fire extinguisher and smacks him on the head and knocks him out and pulls Prince Andrew's limp body into the room. And then John begins to rummage through the desk that's inside. And the narration says, not many people can say they've decked a member of the royal family. It's turning into quite an evening. And with his taste in clothing, I should find just what I need. And as he rummages through the desk, he finds what he's looking for. And what he's looking for are handcuffs. And he says, bingo. Then he walks back to Marston's office and the narration says, I know what I'm going to have to do here. And I reckon I can live with it. Shit. I live with everything else, but I need to talk to Marston. I need to know why. So as John walks into Marston's office, it turns out Marston and David Heslett and Nigel are all there waiting. And Marston says, where have you been? And John replies, bathroom. Wait outside for a sec, will you, Nigel? Heslett, you can piss off too. Let's talk, Marston. And Heslett does not appreciate what John just said to him, so Heslett says, I'm warning you. But Marston cuts him off saying, quiet, Heslett. Do as he says. And then as David and Nigel walk out of the room, Marston and John turn to each other, and Marston has a very smug look on his face, and he says, so, how can I help you? And John just cuts straight to the chase. He says, you wanted to put a demon on the throne, Marston. You're a friggin' lunatic. And Marston kind of smiles and says, no, Constantine. I'm a patriot. I wanted to restore the monarchy of this country to its rightful power. I wanted a king who would have the iron will to rule absolutely, and I believe he was willing. He would be backed by the military and advised by me. There would be no parliament, no opposition, no radicals, no liberals, no thinkers, no immigrants. There would simply be the rulers and the ruled, and we could do anything. And John says, you're talking about putting the thing that used to be Jack the Ripper in charge of us? The bastard eats people, you head case. But Marston just looks at him calmly and says, Ah, but Constantine, what has our royal family ever done except feed off the blood of the people? And we get this really creepy splash page of Marston looking very serious, and there's a Union Jack being torn above him. And from the tears, blood is pouring, and then the blood is pouring into the mouth of Calabraxis, who is sitting on a throne below, and he is drinking it as he is shredding the flag even more. And the realization of how evil Marston is hits John, and he says, Jesus Christ. And Marston smiles a big evil smile, and then John looks at him and says, You are a lunatic, Marston. You haven't a clue what you're dealing with. You can't control it, and you don't know how to banish it. You couldn't even pick the right bloody demon, could you? And Marston kind of chuckles and puts his hands in his pocket and begins to stroll around the room and says, I admit, it was a disappointment. And John cuts him off and says, I'll bet. Calabraxis, the devil's butcher. And you thought you could control it? Marston, I know I'm a dead man as soon as I've sorted all this out for you, but I'll do it anyway, because I'm not having a blade demon loose on the earth. And I know the next thing you're going to do, you stupid piece of upper class shit, is go looking for another demon, and then you're going to try it again. And then John looks at him with extreme disgust and hate, and he says, God damn your black soul to hell. Then we focus on Prince Charles, who is in the same room as them, but he's going through some kind of existential crisis, and mainly it's because the demon is realizing that he doesn't have a chance. It knows John Constantine is going to kick him out of this body, and it does not want that. So we get a full page of like the musings of the actual demon, and the way that they draw this is super creepy. It's the demon is actually like latched on to Prince Charles's brain and brain stem, and little tendrils from the demon's body are worming their way into Prince Charles's brain. And the narration over all this says, Calabraxis knows the game is up. It just isn't fair. Every time it walks into the world above, it gains new tastes, new pleasures, whole new sensations that can make the return below more bitter still. Oh yes, hell is warmer. And the food is ripe and expertly matured. But a hundred years ago, Calabraxis tongued the bile from Liz Stride's guts and the sorrow from her soul, and never once had he tasted such a delicacy. And now it's almost over. A shame. But there is always one crumb of comfort, thinks Calabraxis. There's always next time. Then we cut to outside the mind of Prince Charles, and we see that around his body, Nigel is drawing all the symbols and the pentagram and everything in order to begin the exorcism. And John is just kind of standing and supervising over Nigel draw these things, and he says, that's it, sort of a squiggle linked to a pointy bit. That's the way. 
nothing to it, huh, Nige? We'll make a magus out of you yet. And then Nigel turns to him kind of annoyed and says, how, how can you joke at a time like this? Hezlet's going to kill us. And just as Nigel says that, Marston and Hezlet walk in and they ask, are you ready yet? Two hours you've been drawing that thing. Let's get on with it. And then John kind of smiles and says, you're the boss. And then his narration over that smile says, and you asked for this, Marston. If I had any doubts about what I'm going to do to you, they're long gone. All that demon kingmaker bullshit, pal, that was your death warrant. And I guess I had originally thought that Prince Charles was hanging on the wall because the way that Simpson drew him, it looked like he was hanging from a couple swords. But actually, he's pinned to the floor with the swords. So he's still in the same Jesus Christ pose, but he's actually laying on the floor and he's surrounded by the pentagram and all the symbols and everything that Nigel drew. So John looks at Prince Charles on the floor and he begins the ceremony and he thinks to himself, this bit's easy. A slight twist on the summoning ritual to get him out. And then we can start playing my way. So John points at the possessed Prince Charles and yells out, Don't piss about, you bastard. You heard the spell. You know the rules. Get out of him. And then apparently nothing happens quick enough for Marston and he says, Nothing's happening. And just as he says that, the demon Calibraxis is pulled out of the mouth of Prince Charles. And it looks like Prince Charles is vomiting up ground beef maybe it's all pink and it's definitely flesh and maybe it's all the stuff that he had eaten from all the different people but either way it's definitely gross meat that he's puking up and calabraxis appears just as he looked before in front of john and everybody and then john turns to marston and says you were saying and then marston looks at the prince and thinks that he's dead and he yells it's killed him and then john evaluates the prince and says nah the wound's just an illusion the bastard's showing off then Marston yells at John, then finish the infernal thing, send it to hell. And just as Marston yells this, John grabs him by the forearms and takes the handcuffs that he took from Prince Andrew and he proceeds to handcuff Marston to a pipe that's in the room. I will definitely say this is a convenient pipe because before this, there definitely wasn't a lot of pipes on the walls in the Caligula club. And of course, Marston is surprised and he says, Constantine, what are you doing? Let me go. I said, let me go. And then John turns to the demon Calabraxis and says, Calabraxis, enter him. And he points to Marston and Marston says, what? But that's the only thing Marston gets out before the demon goes into his body and possesses him. And not a lot really is shown with the possession. It just takes him over and you just see little skulls in the eyes of Marston. And then Marston begins to frantically try to pull his hand out of the handcuffs. And John watches smiling and the narration says, at first Calabraxis is bewildered. What the hell is Constantine playing at? Then it sees his face and he knows his thoughts. It's cuffed to the wall and can't reach the others, but it can still get one last meal. And with that, the possessed Marston begins to eat himself. First, the forearm that is not handcuffed. He just takes a big old bite down to the bone and rips all the flesh off. And everyone in the room is watching this. And John begins to light a cigarette, of course, because what else are you going to do when you watch someone eat themselves alive? And John's narration says, fingers, an eye, chunks of an arm, a spouting wrist quenches the thirst. And the vertebrae start popping as he goes for the candy. And by candy, John means that the possessed Marston kind of bends himself in half, like almost folds himself in half, and he's still standing. So like his midsection just turns down. And that's what John means when he said in his narration that vertebrae were popping because Calabraxis is literally making Marston break his own back in order to eat his ass. <laughs> that's what it looks like. And Nigel's watching this and he says, oh no, no. Don't say he's eating his, what's he doing? And John's watching this very nonchalantly, not surprised at all. And he answers Nigel, kissing his arse goodbye, maybe. But his thoughts are cut off by David Hezlet saying, Constantine, make it stop. And when John looks over, he sees that David is pointing his revolver at John. And Nigel sees this and says, oh God, because he's thinking they're about to die because obviously David's going to shoot them. And David says, I mean it, you bastard. Stop. Stop. I'll blow your freaking head off. And then John kind of smiles and looks down and says, You are such a prick, Hezlet. I can see down the chambers of that thing, and they're empty. So if you remember from before, David had shot four other guests that had seen what was going on with the prince, 
and then he shot Holly and Hugh, and that is six shots, and revolvers tend to only have six shots, so he was empty, and I guess David never reloaded in the time between him shooting all those people and him coming into this room with Marston. And David begins to sweat as John smiles, and John actually says, forgot to reload after the witnesses. And David just instinctually tries to shoot John, and all he gets is clicks as he pulls the trigger, and then John very uncharacteristically punches David in the face. And as he does this, the narration in the panel says, I might be pretty useless in a punch up, but I know this, hit first, hit hard, and you might just win. So not only does Constantine punch David, while David is reeling from the punch, John takes his face and slams it into his knee, and then he grabs David by the hair as David is on the ground kneeling in pain, and John turns to the possessed Marston and says, Oi! You're hungry, arsehole? Starving? Well, get it down, you! And then John proceeds to throw David over into Marston's reach, and the possessed Marston doesn't hold back at all. He goes right for David's throat, and he tears it open, and the narration says, Killing the mortal is automatic. A distraction. The one Calibraxis really wants is over there. So as Marston is tearing open David's throat, he's looking at John while he's doing it. And then the possessed Marston stops biting into the throat of David and begins to chew on his own hand that's in the handcuffs. And the narration says, all the demon has to do is get to him. And of course, Nigel sees this and says, shit, he's going to bite his way loose. He'll get us. But John replies to him, no, teeth will break on the bone. And then we get a panel of that happening where Marston is almost through his wrist, but he can't quite break through the bones. And we actually hear his teeth crack as they try to do so. And then the possessed Marston gives up on that and just begins eating David Hazlitt again. And as John watches this, Nigel covers his eyes and says, oh, uh, Jesus, how can you watch? And John replies, same as Marston, Nige. I just want my pound of flesh. And then John's narration continues. No, Nige is right. So John actually pulls himself away and walks over to Nige and kind of consoles him and says, all right, son, let's get some air, huh? And then Nigel says, what? What about him? Referring to the now not possessed Prince Charles. And John says, want to do him in and strike a blow for the revolution? We spend the rest of our lives on the run, mate. Anyway, he's had a blade demon camping out in his bonds. He won't get over that too quickly. One way or another, the bastard will pay his dues. So John and Nigel just leave Prince Charles on the ground, all bloody and covered with uh, goop and everything that came out of him. And he is still pinned to the floor with the two swords going through his hands. So we can't really get up. Then we cut to a foggy space. We can't really tell what it is, but there is a man hanging from a hook and chain that are just coming from above. And the man is naked and we see that the man is Marston. And the narration says, Sir Peter Marston snaps awake, unsure of where he is. It's dark. There's a foul smell. It's so cold. And then he calls out, Is, is there someone there? Who is it? I, I am, I am Sir William Whitley Gull. And then the naked body of Marston looks up and he sees the demon Calibraxis staring at him. And the narration says, Calibraxis sniggers to itself as Marston's first scream echoes round its pantry. It's the butcher to the devil's court, after all, and it takes pride in its work, and it knows what the first of the fallen will be dining on tonight. So it seems that John cast the demon back to hell, obviously, and the demon took Marston's soul with him, and now he's torturing Marston in hell. And as John walks away from the Caligula Club at night, the narration says, what has our royal family ever done except feed off the blood of the people? You tell me, mate. I only work here. And then John walks mysteriously down the street and into the night. And that is the end of the Royal Blood story arc. So if you guys have any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can email me at planes, trains, and comic books, all one word at gmail.com. And we will see you on the next one.